just uh, Bob, like uh, go back to what Derek said. If you actually look at the, the, the people, and which was quite full, eh? if you look at the average age of the volunteers that were there, they're still there. And I, I believe, I, I firmly believe we have four more volunteers coming up. Right now they're coaching because their kids are still young. That's just right. as we did when our, when our kids were young, we were involved at that end of uh, volunteering. And once, once their careers were over, their minor hockey careers, we, we stayed involved because, uh, because we enjoyed it. And I think uh, it's, it's, it's unlike anything else. If, if you play hockey as a child because you, you like it, and then when you have a son, he plays hockey. And if you go on and volunteer, your son also sees that come out. And I, and I think you'll get a high percentage of these kids coming back. And you, and you do, I, I see that all the time. I see it, kids that are coaching now that, that I remember they were eight years old when I was coaching them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is, that, is that giving back? Yeah. Were you, I was surprised at the number of people that turned out. Were you surprised at the number of people that wanted to attend this summit in the middle of summer? Uh, yeah, we were. That was that was the crux. We, we, we the NOHA, uh, you know, had reservations. The cost was pretty significant. I mean, this was paid for on the backs of the NOHA and through the membership, really, the membership. indirectly, right? But yeah, it, it was. Uh, you know, a long week, you know, weekend, a beautiful weekend. Um, you know, that's prime time vacation time in Northern Ontario, and and yeah, we, you know, the number was one sixty. That's what you know, that was sort of the number we were looking for. I think maybe thirty or forty didn't show, and and, and it's unfortunate. Some had some great reasons. Some just choose to blow it off because of the weather and something better to do. And I think they they missed the boat. And yeah, uh, I, I believe you're absolutely. They did. had a real opportunity, you know, to be involved in how yeah. they're saying, and, and I even. Hazard to guess that some of these people are the ones that have been the biggest pain of the, you know, in the Achilles hand, the tendon of uh, the associations and the NOHA, right? Do you remember anything like this taking place around here in the past? No. Jim? What I found very interesting about this was uh, when we showed up, when we looked at the agenda on uh, Saturday, I was, a, I was a career salesman and we, we go to meetings and meetings are always, you know, you have to uh, be careful and uh, listen, you have to watch everything, right? And meetings would last if you started at nine, you'd be out of there by three. Saturday was nine, nine to nine, I believe. Yeah. And you know, we, we go out for breaks, and there wasn't one complaint, because you know what? That day when that flew by, and uh, the way it ended up with that open, open uh, hot, that was, yeah. we could have spent. We we probably could be still there with the uh, amount of information that that uh, it was so easy going, and it it it, uh, it was so relaxing there. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is the. the uh, this true sport organization, it, it's, it was started by the Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport. So, and, you know, it's, and it's supported by all of the ministers of sport for uh, the federal and provincial levels. But what they, they found in a, a survey that they did a number of years ago, it was released in 2008, that 90% of Canadians feel that sport should and can promote moral and character development in youth and, and really affect the quality of life in communities. And they found that only 20% of the people felt that sport was living up to its potential. And I think on the weekend, we just saw an example of how interested people are in finding out how do we do things better. It, it's not like we're dissatisfied with what we're doing or what we're trying to do. It's we want to attract more customers. Do we, how do we do things yeah. better? And some of the topics that, that we will get into, you know, were really kind of emotional. And, and it wasn't necessarily people debating it, and we know the problem is there. Help us. How do we solve this? Because we're all dealing with it. And, and, and it was, you know, if we, if we go right into some of the things that came up when we're talking about the association's future and volunteering, like volunteering is huge. And it's not just in sports. I can go to a Lions Club, and they'll tell, us, tell you the same thing. They're having trouble recruiting and retaining volunteers. Anything come up uh, out of the, uh, the conference that, that either one of you you know, really latched onto and said, "This is an important point." What I what I noticed in the volunteer segment is is uh, this year, if, when you look at the Nickel District Association, that it's all one big league now, and there's not, there's uh, nine associations from uh, from Walden around to Coniston, who had uh, who, who before had a hockey board that was may, maybe comprised of 50% rep parents and 50% house league, maybe some of them had a, a lot more rep parents. And to that end, uh, the, the rep parents, a lot of them went with the with the Nickel City Board, left voids in their in their own uh, in their own home association <coughs> board, and talking to different associations in the area, they seem to be filling up these uh, 
in other words, like in our area, the volunteers seem to be coming out in droves. We're getting good volunteers. I talked to to one board, and there was only two coming back, and they they needed fourteen. They only need one or two more now, and I thought that was pretty. I thought that was fantastic. You know, that's an interesting point. I don't I don't remember that comment specifically coming up, but it's almost it's almost get out of the way so the new people can come in. There's a lot of that. Yeah, and that's reflective of our last AGM. We, I think some people who've been on that board and our board for some time, yeah. and you know what, and, and did great work, uh, you know, last say 10, 15 years. Um, but you know what, make room for some new, new ideas. ideas and some new energy, um, because you know you tend to you know sort of be entrenched in the same old position. Yeah. Where, you know when you are on a board. Um, until you hear a new idea and someone convinces you to think about it a little more and go, you know what, I'm changing my, I'm changing my opinion on that. I, I'm, I'm going 180 because it is best for the game, it's best for the kids, I mean, not, you know, only in our own association, but in, in, at large. Well, that same person at can large. utilize some of his old ideas and incorporate them with the new ideas and you have a good bond there. I've respected the older people on the board, but I think now they're respecting the new youth movement that are, you know, have energy and, and, and the skill sets to, you know, actually make a lot of things. A lot of these things happen, you know, get them from, you know, point A to point B when we're actually executing things now. And, and the membership is benefiting from that. And I think you're, you're seeing more volunteers yeah. saying, you know what, things are getting done. Whether it's short-term plan or long-term, things are moving and, and there seems to be a new buzz around our board. I know, you know, speaking in, we're, you know, we're talking with Copper Cliff where I never so I envisioned that four years ago, where we have some trust and credibility at the table when we sit down. Yes. And, and you know, that's a really interesting observation, Jim, um, because, you know, over the years, I, it, it's almost as if the old timers, I, I'm, I'm considering myself an old timer now, that, that we feel that we have to stay on in order to maintain the continuity because nobody else is going to come and take our place. The problem is, is if you have a board of 12 people, and you only got two or three new people coming in at a time, the other nine have been supporting each other for so long that those two or three people have no chance to get their new ideas through. It, and I've seen that with boards happen. where it's, oh, God, yeah. it's kind of like circle the wagons, we're all going to support yeah. each other, we're not going to go against what we've been doing because we're kind of like a, an old boys club. That was my first two years of the board. I always yeah. believe it. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and it was like you're bumping your head against the wall. Yeah. And, and, and it's, I mean, can you imagine if we said that the key to getting more volunteers is for the old volunteers to get out of the way? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> most organizations would, would really, you know, put their backs up and say no, because then we won't get anybody. Well, no, you won't get a lot of people. It's just they're afraid to come. I was, I was amazed at, uh, at, at uh, Scott Smith. He was the, he's the uh, yeah, he's chief operating the officer of Hockey Canada. Mm -hmm. He was very impressive. His, uh, when he, uh, and, and you know what, everything he said made so much sense when he, when he said there's only 10% of the population in Canada between 5 and 19 that plays, plays the game of hockey. 10%. It's a big market out there. That, why are these kids not trying it? Why aren't we out there in, in, inviting them to come out and try it? Just, just try to give them an incentive, whether it be a discount. I, I see when that does that. They, they, they'll put a, a, an ad if you're a your brand new player, $99 this year. Now, at the same token, if we ever got that up to... Uh, if we ever doubled that up to twenty percent, we wouldn't have enough ranks. I was just going to say, can we afford to increase yeah. that? Yeah. But like, like we're in a we're in a really, you know, catch twenty two situation. I know in suburb it would be. I mean, if we increased our, our hockey registration by fifty percent, could we handle it? You probably you know what you you might have to build more outdoor rinks. You might have to do you know, our we're season, not gonna, we're our not seasons build, would be shorter. We're not yes. going to build more you know, indoor rinks. You know what, we have to come up with some pretty innovative solutions to how get those kids Would in. that be a problem? First time I ever heard of this half season. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I, new, I, I think I, I've heard it before and, I, and it makes sense. I mean, I'm a paying parent. I, to pay rep hockey today is becoming elitist. There's no doubt about it. I know kids uh, who are, you know, we have people on our team. I, I mean, I've sponsored kids, uh, so is my friend Paul Lazoff, just to keep kids in hockey. Uh, you know, I owned a hockey school for about five years, and we had a fund just for those type of kids. 
you know, that just were disadvantaged, but really want to continue playing the sport or wanted to make the jump from Hosley to rep, but the barrier was money. It always has been. You know, and, and I know your association does it and Sudbury Minor does it, and but yeah, that that was... Um, but I'm not so sure that the cost is, is, is around the actual game as, as it is around the things around the game. As, as an example, if you go to a tournament now, hotel costs are, uh, you know, they're very expensive, meals are expensive, you know, a little nine-year-old's paying, maybe you're paying 200 bucks for a stick, where when, when, when their parents were, you know, you'd pay 10 bucks for a stick. I don't think the actual registration has really hurt. Uh, no, that's, hurt, been, hurt. that's pretty fair. We, we, we didn't have any, yeah, in it's gone up incrementally. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, maybe above inflation. Everything around the game of hockey, I mean, I, I think even if you just buy your child a, a pop and a chip after a game, you know. Yeah, right. It's almost like a person buying a house. If, if you can't afford to pay the taxes on a house, you can't afford to live in that house. Absolutely. And, and, I, and I, the one year I was president, again, everything's in ones with me. One year I was president of my <laughs> uh, Did we vote you up, Bob? <laughs> yeah, we had the best meeting we ever had. There's a good way to get volunteers. We got tired of fundraising, so we said, let's, let's put a motion on the floor to charge the registration we need so we don't need to do fundraising. It was going to double the registration. With the best turnout we ever had. I didn't get elected. I remember, Bob, <laughs> you know, I'm going back and uh, believe it or not, uh, I, I believe you were the one that uh, you added $20 fundraising onto the registration, I believe, one year, okay? And at that time I had three or four kids and I didn't agree with that, okay? But I, I really didn't know that much about it. And back then we all dealt in house. I've been on a lot of websites this year, you know, looking to hand out our, uh, you know, our tournament schedules. You would not believe how many associations have a built in. I'm sorry. Twenty to fifty dollars. I could not believe it. You, you were thirty years ahead of your well, time. But they do it in high schools now, and, and this is yeah. causing a lot of problems. Kids register for high school. They got to pay fifty bucks or seventy-five bucks for the the extra fee. They don't raise tuition rates at universities as much as they should. What they do is they increase the extra fees, and there's no yeah. restriction on how much you can charge for those extra fees. Yeah, they so charge more for parking, more for bus, more like. In court cases, it's yeah. being challenged by the, the Canadian Students uh, Federation. Yeah. They're going to court yeah. over those ancillary fees. Yeah. And, and right. So it's becoming so easy to do it. But, but, but when you take a look at the cost of hockey, like you say, if you cut out the tournaments and you shorten the season, hockey's affordable. Now, there's going to be some real hard liners that feel you're losing an awful lot if you cut out tournaments. But what I like in the... Uh, I think Hockey Canada implemented the rule right about no body contact in yes, the yes. yeah. I cool. think you're going to see an awful lot more kids in high school staying in the game now that, that quit when they got into the bantam image level because they just didn't want to get into the body contact. But at the same token, they will be taking spots of kids who have already played high school and most kids will have to find another place to play. So we will rip. It, it'll, it's a ripple effect. Yeah, it'll yeah. come back. We will get to, uh, the organizations will get kids back. Because these guys that still want to play body checking, they're taking somebody else's job, and these kids still want to play hockey, so they'll have no choice but the, they yeah. still want to You'll play. You'll see rep yeah. hockey, I agree with you. They're, you know, those kids who want to stay yeah. in, in, in body will come back to the rep side of the game. Uh, I definitely believe the house league will grow because of, you know, kids just don't, you know. And it's only for the next two or three years yeah. that this will happen because yeah. right now the kids in Adam and that, they will never, they will never have experience body check and so. And and I remember uh, back when they took it out in, uh, I think it was 1979 or what. They took it. Uh, it used to be right in all hockey. Right. And then he took it out, and uh, you couldn't get it back until then. It didn't affect anybody. And nobody. Uh, there you was know, no I, big outcries. Some, some of the roughest games I've ever seen have been uh, no body checking games. I mean. Body contact, 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 contact is, is, is can be pretty rough. Watch women's yeah. hockey. Yeah, it's that's, become very aggressive. They know how to teach it. They, they know sure how to then the girls adapt to it right away. It's, it's amazing how, how they pick it up and and uh, looks like they're checking, but they're not. They're they're, they're just angling you off. So, but they're taught that at, at an early age and stays with them. Now, so, so when you get into the, this whole idea of a volunteer retaining volunteers and recruiting volunteers, one of the things I noticed was that the, one of the, the Biggest deter deterrence was uh, family involvement. If I'm reading this right, yes. no, that's the reason for that's getting into it. For getting into it, yes. getting into it, that yeah. your family's involved. That's right. Yeah. So, so if 75 percent of the people are getting in because their family's involved. As soon as their family's not involved, now, I'm one of those. You're going somewhere else. Very few people, other than Jim, maybe stick around. Well, I don't know, Bob. You're still around. I, I saw well, you all weekend there. But I'm, but I'm not volunteering in the organization. I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I'm an interested person. Did you leave when your children were out of the game? Though? I stopped being directly involved, but I wasn't, I didn't get out of the sport. But my kids got into refereeing. So as they're refereeing and I'm driving around and I'm, I'm watching them even referee at the OHL level, am I still involved? You know something, I got out, you know, I did, the same thing happened. When my kids went through hockey, all I, uh, so I finished coaching in 1999, okay? And I, I enjoyed coaching for the 20 or 25 years I coached. I really looked forward to it. My kids were finished hockey, and all I, all I did, all I took care of was the, uh, the Renegades tournament. I, I stayed involved there because I scheduled that and organized that. I helped oh, our committee. Oh, yeah, committee yeah, yeah. But anyways, and then about, uh, about five years ago, Bob Belrose, our, our minor, I've known Bob for years, he, he calls me up and asks me what I'd like, uh, like to be convenient for the novice. We don't have one. And I thought about it. If he hadn't called me, I wouldn't have volunteered. And, and, and when he called me, I, I, I'm there for life now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Were you so, surprised at that point when you heard it on the weekend? People said that. Yeah. You have to go and ask. Yeah, we were we were one of the tables that that put that in there, and I and I think we don't do that enough. If we if we go out, you, I think there's all kinds of volunteers out there. I'll tell you something. I get a every year when we have the renegades because we're we're, we're an independent tournament. You would not believe how many people come up to me and say, Jim, if you need an hour here or an hour there, don't hesitate to call. Unfortunately, we get so much help. I I, I very seldom call them. And, and when I do call them, they're right there. Yeah, I, I turned away volunteer time yeah. uh, this week, this weekend. I turned it away. I was like, I told them, I was talking to Chris. Chris, do you know that I had numerous emails of people willing to give a few hours on Friday, four hours on Saturday, some hours, you know? And I actually turned away, you know, literally tens of hours of volunteers. I think time. that and I, I was like going, I mean, I would have never said that before. You know, you're out there beating the bushes trying to, you know, uh, poor kid, you know, the kids, I, I had kids that were supposed to know, you know, so that my son and a few kids were running the floor and, and collecting things and they were getting high school hours. Um, I was a little disappointed. I had eight lined up and, uh, you know, four, three, three showed up. So the, the, the generational gap is there and that was a challenge. I mean, that to me resonated through that talk was the challenge between the generational gap is what do they want? What makes yes, it motivates yes. them to volunteer now? Because it's different than you, Jim, and it's, yeah. it was different from than, 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 than Rob, and it's different for me. Um, I try to get my son involved now because, you know, and he had a good time. He spoke. I mean, he spoke to Don McKee. He got to speak to um, Barry McKenzie. These people left him with something. He he came to me the other day and said, "Dad, this that was really cool." Sat down with Bob Allen because he's going to the Ice Dogs camp at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. He was drafted by. Um, Niagara Falls, and he got some good information about how to prepare for that. I think also that Derek, at this at this uh, summit this weekend, the, the atmosphere in there, you guys created such a great atmosphere. Uh, at, at, so whoever came out and, and volunteered your time, I bet you they didn't want to leave. They they got hooked right into it. You, 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 and I, I think that's one thing. I I I think if you uh, if you have an organization and you're uh, you know you're harping on people, you're uh, you're correcting every time they make a mistake, and you're not creating a, like an enjoyable atmosphere for a volunteer position. I think you will have trouble getting uh, volunteers. And I think if you just put out a, a letter saying we need volunteers, I don't think that helps either. I think you have to per put the personal touch on it, and you go out and uh, physically ask the person, "This is where we need help. This is something that, that you could yeah. really master." I've, I've seen, you know, and I, I really believe that you will. We we can. You, you'll always keep your volunteers in, in, in this way. Paul, Paul Carson, I'll just, just one last thought on that. Paul Carson, you know, who was there and who was a you know, VP right, of development, he said, what you guys created this weekend was a sort of a professional team. It was, it was a professional atmosphere. It sure was. It was a, he said it was, there was a, you could tell there was a family theme to the whole weekend. Um, and that's what, he, that's what he said, you know, he said, congratulate you and your team for that, creating that sort of environment. Well, 